All right, I, I kind of had to reconsider what I wanted to do. Um, I'm also going to record this for our absent people because uh, otherwise I think they're going to get behind. So um, we'll see how OBS does. The If you go to Google Classroom, right, we're, we're going to look at Autodesk Inventor. We're going to make certain that we can all get into it, and we're going to try to get you guys an account uh, because Autodesk Inventor, if you are a student, is completely free. Okay, so if you don't have a potato at the house uh, and you're not one of those weirdos that uses backs, um, then uh, you can have this at the house if you are one of those people that wants to do that. Um, you don't have to log in with an account here at school because we, we license it through the school. But, right, if you click this link here, right, it's going to take you to like, hey, how do I make a student account? So. Take those where it says create an account for students and educators, right? Let's make ourselves a student account. Be sure to use your school email address uh, and be sure to use Elkhorn Crossing, not your home high school, all right? If you choose your home high school, it's going to not work for you because your, other, your home high schools um, are probably not licensed. But it should be set up to where you don't have, I don't have to do anything. Um, there is some, there is some quality controls. There's some uh, security checks. A couple of you may be asked to to generate a letter and send it in. And if that is you, um, I can get that letter for you that basically proves that you're enrolled. Okay. All right. But basically, go you know on the Get Products page. Which so click on that. And then you're going to choose student and then use your school address. And then you'll probably have to go into your email and approve, uh, you know, your email address. So once you get this successfully, you get the green checkbox that says, hey, you created your account. Then be sure to go into your school email account and verify your email address. So you got to do two things. And then once you get everything up and running and you've confirmed your account, go ahead and double click on your desktop on Inventor and it will bring up this screen. You won't have any pictures here because it will be blank for you, but you can go ahead and log in up here and using your account. It's not important. It doesn't do anything for you, so you don't have to. Um, you may get a a thing that says, you know, hey, we need to license. If you do that, we need to talk. I'll start back up my recording. So with Inventor, right? So the knowing the location of where your files are are the most important is the most important thing when you're first starting out. I don't know how many people come in first to class and they're like, my files are deleted. Well, they're not deleted because there's not like, I don't log into the computer and delete it in, you know, glee in the middle of the night. Um, you just don't remember where you saved them. I highly suggest you get a flash drive and save to the flash drive because you never know when somebody borrows a computer or a computer goes down or your friend who has all the files on their flash drive decides to you know take a fortnight break uh, and they don't come to school okay so right I would get a I would get a flash drive and you know use it to save our files not important right now but in the next few days it will be important as you try to keep your files right the other thing we like to do right is we can organize our projects into or organize our files into projects right so that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to make different projects and that's what that's what it's doing over here so if you look at the screen right um one of the other classes we're doing a front end loader right i think it was the sophomores right um, I've got all my tutorial files in the tutorial section. And you can kind of see, right, even organized, like when I do this, the recent front end loader files is all that shows up. When I switch over to tutorials, right, a whole bunch more of tutorials. Now, these are just recent. It is not all the files. Every year, it's like, it's not showing up, my thing's deleted. And about 90% of the time, the people that think it's deleted is just because it's not showing up in the recent files, okay? If we go file, right, open, or file, save, 
file open, right, we can see that there's more tutorial files that is showing up on that page. Okay, so file management, basic Windows file management, if you don't know it, we need to get you a, you know, a very basic understanding so you can keep up with your files. All right, so if you want to follow along, right, we're going to hit these, these three buttons right here, and this is where we make new projects, okay, and then we can go settings. And then it's going to bring up the new project, I don't know, the project menu. I don't know what it's called. Right, and then if we go down here to new, we're going to make a new project. Well, you guys are. I'm not, because I already have one called Tutorials, which is what we're going to do. And we'll say, hey, new single user project, next. Right, and then here we're going to type, you know, Tutorials. That way we can put all our tutorial stuff in the same area. And then we want to notice, whenever we do this, we want to notice where is it saving to. And for most of us, unless we've changed it, it's going to be to our documents inventor and then whatever you call it, right? So you hit finish. I'm going to hit cancel, but you hit finish. Right, and then you will have a tutorials and it has a check next to it, and that means that is the currently the active project that you are in. All right, and then you got that done, you can hit done. Here. So if we go to the file manager, right? So this is separate from Inventor, right? So we have all this, it's an Inventor. But down here at the bottom, you've got a little thing that looks like a folder, right? The Windows File Manager. Give that a click, all right? Mine showed up on the other screen. Let me drag it over, all right? If you give that a click, right? And then I said, hey, pay attention to where you're saving it. It's probably in, right? We're going to go to Documents, right? And then we're going to go to Inventor. And then you should see in Inventor your tutorials directory. Do you see that? What? No, shocking. Guess where your files are when you save to the tutorial folder? Right in there. Okay, so then when you need to move it or save it to a flash drive, right, then you can go in and right click and say copy or whatever you want to do, wherever copy is, there it is. Right click copy, go over to your, you know, the drive that you want to put in, right click paste, etc., etc. Okay, if that all seems like voodoo to you, you should probably watch a five minute YouTube video on basic Windows file management. All right, because you should be able to do that at this point, y'all are ninth graders. All right, but I can help you with it too once we get to there. Okay. So, did everybody be, was everybody able to find their files? Did everybody find their tutorial directory in, using the Windows uh, File Manager? Yes. Awesome. All right, close that down. Let's go back to Inventor. Now, the thing that you're going you're gonna to learn about Inventor is there's literally three ways to do everything, right? If I want to do a new, new part, I can hit this button, this giant button that says new, right? Don't do that because that's not my preferred way. But I could do it. I could do it. I click that. It opened up on the other side, but I can drag it over. And then I got this. And then I pick what kind of part I want. I move on with my life. I can also go file new, right? Brings up a... The, basically the same screen. I could also go file, new, hit the side arrow, and then, and then it gives me a shortcut to skip that second screen, right? Or my favorite, all right, so this is way number four, I like to hit this down arrow and say the uh, part, right? Or drawing, whatever I'm, whatever I'm gonna make. So we're gonna get, so you can pick whichever one you like better, but I like down arrow, new part. And it's going to sit there and it's going to think for a while. Notice how slow it was. 
All right, now I'm going to close that down so you can see it again. If you think you got it, open up a blank one. Right? But I'm going to hit the down arrow, and then I'm going to say part. I'm just going to click on it, and it's going to open up a new part. Ugh. I have to restart my recording. So we have this big blank space, right? And it kind of looks like on shape and that there's a bunch of pic bunch of commands at the top and then there's this middle window, right? And then we got this thing over on the side. Is this, over, is this an on shape? Yeah. So I have the tree, right? So I call this, they call it the feature tree, all right? Or the modeling window, I think is what they call it. Let me double check that. Uh, yeah, model browser, right? So that's what they call it in this one. Um, Okay, but, but it's kind of the same thing. Commands across the top, uh, model tree or model browser on the side. The view window is here, right? But there's some other things that are kind of handy, right? Usually down here in the bottom left, ugh, where's my mouse? Uh, down here in the bottom left, see where it says ready, right? You will usually find instructions or commands. We'll show that to you later. But, you know, occasionally if it, you think it's asking you for something, it'll probably show up down there, right? And then over here, and it's kind of cut off on my, my screen there, but on the left side, you see all those uh, extra little icons. So we're going to talk about those. And then we got the view cube. We're going to talk about those. Okay. Now, there are similarities with Onshape because really once you know one 3D modeling software, they're kind of all the same. They kind of all ha have the same uh, commands. They kind of have all the same workflow. You just got to find out where the new buttons are. All right. So we're going to start with a new, just a very basic sketch. That is the first thing that you do every time you start, right? So we're going to say start 2D sketch, right? You can click, if you click the down arrows, it's going to show you additional commands. We don't want a 3D sketch, so don't click the down arrow, but just hit start 2D sketch, right? And it's going to bring up, what are these things? Plane. Right, they're actually labeled, right? If you look, if you hover over it, it'll say XY plane, and then YZ plane, and then whatever this plane is. Okay, so those are the planes. What's it want you to do? Right? What's it telling you down here in the corner if you've forgotten? It wants you to pick a plane to draw on. Okay? When you go to do this, I'm just so I can, I can show you, when you open up a new part, right? See this little folder in your feature tree? Right? That says origin. Click the little plus symbol. Right? And you guys are all in geometry, so you should know these terms, right? We have three planes, right? And then they draw. Three axis, axi, is it axi? Axes, I don't know. It has three axes uh, based upon where those planes intersect, right? And then where those three lines intersect, they make a center point, right? So guess where zero, zero, zero is? Yeah, right there at that center point, okay? We want to tie our model to that center point because everything else is undefined, all right? So whenever we start a new sketch, we want to tie our first sketch to that center point, otherwise it's going to move around on us, all right? So pick a plane that you like. I'm partial to the front plane, which is this XY plane, but you pick whichever one. It don't matter today. We're just playing around. All right, and then you see your origin, right? You see your zero, zero. If I go, like we're gonna grab a rectangle here, right? So we have line, circle, arc. Inventor is super handy in that it puts the most used commands like super big, right? I'm gonna use line more than I'm gonna use move so you can see the size difference. So it tries to help you. Notice there's arrows underneath, right? So we have different types of lines, different types of circles, different types of arcs, right? And right the rectangle, there's a whole bunch of crap in there. Right, different ways to lay down rectangles. So you kind of have to remember those are there. The other thing to remember, if you ever get lost on Inventor, all you got to do is is hover, is put your mouse over it, don't move it, and it will give you a tool tip. All right. I like to pay attention. I don't do it for circle too much, but like line, right? If you notice right where it says line, I can't move to it. But see where it says line and then parentheses L, and then close parentheses, 
right? That means if you hit the L key, it will start to draw a line, right? So if I hit escape on my keyboard and then hit L, right, now I'm suddenly drawing a line. All right, those are called shortcuts. If you learn those, you will be faster, right? But I'm not requiring you to learn those. You will pick those up as the more you use, All right? The other one I like to use, I use L a lot and I use D for dimension a lot. So the, that way you can switch to it, okay? Because what I like to do is I like to have my right hand on the mouse and then I will have my left hand over at the keyboard in order so I can hit Alt, Control, and Shift without looking. Right, and escape. Those are kind of like the four commands over here that you're using all the time to modify what you're doing. All right, but let's, let's grab rectangle. So just click on rectangle and then don't, up here in, you know, whatever this is, quadrant four, just draw it up here without it touching anything. We're going to wind up deleting it, so I don't care how big it is. And then on the other one, let's click on the origin. And we're going to know we're on the origin because it's going to turn green. So when you get there, it's going to snap and then turn into a green dot. And it's, notice it's yellow and then it turns to green. That's telling you that you are right on the origin. The other thing it will do is if you get close to the midpoint of a line, so go up to your rectangle, don't click, but you see where it's yellow and then it turns into a green dot? That means you're on the midpoint, which is the middle. And it's super handy to be able to, to have the middle of a line, right? If I want to find the center of this rectangle, I can lay in, oops, I'm drawing another rectangle. I can dry, dr lay in, and you don't have to follow, I'm just illustrating a point, right? I can go from corner to corner and then I can drop a point, right, at the midpoint of that line where it turns green. And then what have I found? the center of that rectangle, okay? And that's handy for like dimensioning and whatnot. All right, but your other rectangle, let's draw it attached to the center and then drag it out. Right? What's the difference that we notice? Like right off the bat. Yeah, the color, right? These are all blue and these two are black, right? When it turns black, it's saying that, hey, it is defined, right, and it can't really move anywhere. This line is always going to be attached to this line because it's attached to that center point, right? So Inventor tries to um, figure out your design intent, okay? And so it, it figures, since you're drawing a rectangle, that, it, it, you, that you want this to be vertical and you want this to be horizontal, Right, and then from there, if you've attached this point, right, it could only be on this line. And you'll notice, right, go up here, make sure, hit escape, make sure you're not in any commands, right? But grab that point and notice this, this one that we haven't defined, that we haven't locked to the origin, what can you do? Right, you can drag it around, right? Notice this one, if I grab this point, I can't drag to the left, but I can drag up and down, right? It's because this line has not been defined a distance yet, right? It's not been locked down. It's not been what they call constrained, right? And we have a whole tool bar selection on constraints, right? And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. We'll talk about the inter interface and whatnot. Um, and we'll talk about how to delete things, all right? Uh, but we are out of time, so go ahead and let's shut everything down. I'm going to stop my recording.